Okay. Um, as you all know, on February 3rd, uh, 38 cars of Norfolk Southern freight train derailed in East Palestine, Ohio. Uh, firefighting water that was contaminated from the chemical spill is being transported on a freight train from East Palestine to Houston, Texas for disposal. During the transportation, a train crashed into it on a track over the Jimmy Mann's Evans Memorial Bridge, causing the contaminated water to spill into the Kentucky Lake slash Tennessee River. Um, we have said that it is unaffected thus far, as all tests have indicated. However, uh, we are performing tests on the water um, in a variety of manners, which my commissioners can speak more to later because of the nature of them. We're also just reading bottled water to the residents of the affected areas, and we are preparing to install filtration systems and the necessary dams to prevent contamination of groundwater. Um, in response to claims by the government that nothing was affected, climate activists did storm the Tennessee State Capitol. Um, causing notable damage and repair work is underway. If any commissioner would like to give more details than that, they may at this time. I don't care, y'all. Just go ahead. Who did the testing? Yeah, who, who, who was testing? Environment, go on up. Environment? I don't know about testing. Test. I can talk about cleanup. Yeah, you can yes. do cleanup. Yeah, okay. So we've strategically placed carbon activated charcoal filters at dams that flow is it downstream or? Upstream, 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 upstream from the crisis. So the way that the water flows, it will the contaminated water will flow through the filters and then it will not affect any of the dams further upstream. And so this will take out all of the potential harmful chemicals. Although as of right now, as Will said, there is no evidence that those chemicals are affecting people. But just as a precautionary measure, we're putting in the filters. Anything else to add? Okay. Okay. you want to? I talk about bottled water. Bottled water, yeah, don't worry about water. So um, we found the most liberal estimates assume that the water contaminated can only travel like really where it's dangerous levels up to the 100 mile radius around where the spot was where it was initially contaminated. Um, so we found how many Tennessee citizens are within about a 100 mile radius and would be getting that water supply. And so we calculated the cost for about approximately three weeks of bottled water for those citizens. Um, I think the cost came out to what is it, forty million, fifty million, so approximately fifty million dollars. Can you fill in some testing on that and tell the question? Did you choose testing? Okay, so for testing, we discovered that um, the derailment released high levels of vinyl chloride. So to test for vinyl chloride, we decided that the best course would be do ga gas chromatography, in which that would cost around two million, or sorry, five million to test for, and then we decided to hire 50 workers, um, it would cost around two million to be able to actually test for it in the 100 mile radius. Yeah. I will um, take any questions you guys have at this time. Yeah, honestly, like being there last night made me realize just like how quickly you guys solved this issue. Um, and I was really blown away, especially by the way that you guys uh, split up the issue. Um, so hats off to you guys. Again, you explained it well just now. Um, hmm. if, if there were any specific commissioners who wanted to discuss like how it impacted like their personal like plans going in like I know this would be predicted this because I saw you take a tally of who predicted this um I will wait who who here did predict train derailment wow so impressed and Grace predicted storming the capital yes I, I will also say that I think the work the commissioners over the course of this weekend to make sure that we had a budget surplus in advance we had the budget surplus roughly 523 million going into the crisis so that gave us a lot of leeway to work with in terms of funding different projects using more liberal estimates versus more conservative estimates just to provide as much coverage as possible. So I think the commissioners work across the board on generating revenue and then strategically spending revenue in areas that need to be spent and not in areas that didn't need to be spent and really make prices a lot easier. So, so props to them for doing that throughout this weekend. Yeah. Um, so unless you guys have um, something else to add about the crisis specifically, we can definitely move into talking about your budget and some of the maneuvering that you did there um, over the course of the last few days. Does anyone want to say anything? Y'all can literally just shout it out. This is not from the press conference. Yeah. Um, so like, 
um, Will just talked about, because we pushed our legislation um, that made a profit with our carbon pricing bill, and then there was also a bill in the white chambers that made money based off red traffic light fines. Um, we did have that $500 million surplus. So in order to pass everybody's bills that are in this budget, we did not have to move into any programs that the ten state of Tennessee has already funded. And we didn't have to take any money away from the budget that the state of Tennessee has already put out for the 2023-2024 budget year. So nothing has changed. We've only added these bills. That's good. Um, so all that considered, if you could say one thing to the delegates who will be voting on this budget, and I feel like I might know what it could be, um, what would you say? Let, let's go down the line. Jada? Um, we worked really hard on it. We think it's really going um, it's made up. It's made up of your bills, so you should pass it so that you can have your bills can have the funding it needs. So. Yeah, I definitely think that um, this budget not only provides funding for the bills, but it doesn't touch the funding for um, current departments. So I think it's great. Mm, we worked really hard and we stayed up late to work on this, so just consider that. Please pass it. I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Dak. This bill supports all sectors of your bills, especially education, so you should pass it. This budget includes all of your bills, and nothing has changed out of the state of Tennessee that you would have any reason to be upset about. Please pass this budget. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of innovative and impactful legislation in there, so I really think you should pass it. <clears throat> Do not fail the budget. <laughs> Please pass this budget. <laughs> pass it. Okay, oh, if you like your bill, pass the budget. Uh, everybody else said. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now that all that fun big stuff is out of the way, we can get a little bit sentimental. As a viewer and a friend of some of you, definitely Will and Siri, and now Maya, we're trauma bonded. Um, uh, I it has been very exciting to see you end your time with the egg on the high note of serving as governor. What would you say has been, go up there. What would you say has been the most like full circle or sentimental moment? Okay, oh, you can make your cry with this one. I told, okay, none of y'all weren't with me in ICJ in Lund. The people who were with me in ICJ in Lund will know that like, this is my big thing that I've experienced with the egg is like, coming in is especially during ICJ when I literally, my freshman year when I first started presenting, I was so nervous. I just started talking so quickly, hey Gina, um, <laughs> that I quite literally choked on my own words to the point that like, no, like I was like choking, choking, like, um, <laughs> sorry, um, like the justice made me sit down and take a break and pause the time. And so going from that state of like nervousness to being able to get up here and give a press conference with like no rehearsal honestly because I totally forgot this was happening. Um, you demanded this. <laughs> yeah, I know, and then I forgot about it until uh, we talked. I forgot about it last night, and I was gonna prepare, and then I just totally forgot. So, um, but uh, being able to like see the same thing happen with delegates in ICJ at Mun, and then at last year the legislature um, being my lieutenant governor and watching them present their bills. Um, I've seen a lot of those delegates who started off really shy last year in white Senate, and then I've gone to like Red House, and there are at least three of them who like would not speak at all at the beginning of last year's gig, and now they're like the fiercest debaters in there. And to know that I have play a role in that is something that's really powerful because I see that like there's a, there's a member of your press who actually was in ICJ, um, and she started off like she started like kind of shy and in her shell, and then I see her like walking around this weekend, and it's just like a totally different demeanor. And so I think it really speaks to the impact that this program has on people and the confidence that it gives them. And to know that I've helped at least in like some small way to give that confidence to people, that's something that like just makes my heart so Yeah, for sure. And I feel like we it's can, applause right here. Definitely like my own experience. Like I was so intimidated to join you. This is only second year at YIG. Um, and I definitely think that the people from our school like you will have definitely um, Hype me up a bit. Felt like I could do it. I mean, if you can do it, I can definitely. Wow. Wow. Um, knowing what you know now, what is one piece of advice you have for 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 whoever comes next? Um, don't take it too seriously because it is meant to be fun. Um, understand the powers of the office, the limitations of it as well. 
there's definitely a strategic game to be played in what you do and when you do it, and it's all about learning how to demonstrate the power in an effective manner that isn't also tyrannical. Nobody likes a tyrant, but nobody likes a weak leader either. Um, but at the same time, I say don't be too serious and enjoy it, but like it does require play. It does require a lot of preparation. Um, so yeah, just I was balance that out. <laughs> On the first day, seeing you and Maya with all your folders and your post-its and your big spread out, I was like, oh, glad I'm not doing that. <laughs> Um, okay, anyone else want to ask questions? That's all I got. Okay, so this question just for my friend, because he said he wants to be governor in 12th grade. Um, <laughs> what would you say is probably the hardest part uh, of your job? Like, the part that you struggle with, but that you love. Okay, so when you're in, when like you're chairing a committee, like I don't know, Red House or Blue Senate or whatever, um, you guide debate. And like you can choose who speaks pro and who speaks con and kind of impact how bill goes in that manner, but you really don't have any power over how the delegates vote at the end of the day. As governor, you really do because you know I have my 13 office awesome commissioners, I have two different chief of staff, who can go out and lobby for bills and you know kind of just not decide their fate but strongly impact what happens. And so there are a lot of great bills in the bill book that my commissioners came to me and said they're well intentioned but they have these issues, or they're well-intentioned, and they cost a lot of money that we don't have to spend. That's always gonna happen. That's just the nature of, that's just the nature of Bill's this conference. Like, it's nothing new, it's nothing personal, it's just how it happens. And so, going out and A, deciding what those bills are gonna be, and then being okay with that decision, you know? At some point, you're like, there's a bill, you're like, it just, it, it, I, I see the purpose, and I respect the delegates' time and energy, but it's either gonna have to get vetoed or it's gonna have to get lobbied against. And that's a really hard thing to do because you know they put a lot of time and energy into it, they put a lot of effort into it, and it's nothing about the work of the delegates themselves. It's just that certain parts of it, well-intentioned, don't necessarily fit with either the agenda the governor wants to pursue or the way the state law is written or the way that the budget's working out. And so being able to walk that line between doing what's necessary to do your job as governor, which is to create a balanced budget, but at the same time respecting the time and effort of delegates is really a hard line to walk. But if you do it well, I, just, I hope I've done, although I'm not gonna say because there may be delegates out there who hate me and that's just part of the job of governor. Um, if you do it well, it really allows you to have a great conference. Anyone else? Um, what kept you like determined and like wanting to go harder for like what you want? Yeah, so my freshman year, um, my governor was Ethan Fell. He's actually at Yale right now. And after I won governor last year, he actually DM'd me on Instagram. He was like, congratulations. And I remember because I was a freshman and we were walking up to the joint session to hear Ethan state a state address. And I bumped into him and his chief of staff on the stairs. And I was like awestruck. Because I was a governor nervous this my first year in EA. Um, the governor was like an idol to me. And I just remember like seeing this person who had this powers walking around with like commissioners and chiefs of staff and a chief of staff and like they were literally directing how legislation at the conference went. It was very clear that you know people think hi Ethan. Um, people think that this is like a mock conference, mock legislation. I've touched on a number of times how it isn't, but like even within the mock conference, the power of the governor is something that like is like is there. And so I saw that it was an opportunity to really like impact positive change. And my it's gonna sound weird, but like I I felt determined enough that if elected I could do a good enough job that I wanted to because I knew there were, you know, like I could help other people. Um, and so I think just seeing the inspiration of how like the governor's performing, Ethan Lucy and Comfort really took the job seriously and how much effort they put into like giving delegates a good conference really kept me going because I wanted to do the same um, for the delegates that were quality so I could serve that role as well for them. Well said. All right, is that all we got? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.